Uh-oh, here he is. How you doing? Uh, have you guys, uh, you guys been, been at it all day? Yeah. <laughs> and what, and, and you know, how much good. you had a few weeks ago? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. I love actually. Oh, you do? Interviews we did. We did good. So you, carry, oh, okay. so you, you, so you consider us grunt work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting in line. I was kidding. It, it seems like we had we had we had a little bit more time to kind of get. Amos into his head a little bit, get his opinions this past season. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's escorting uh, that guy through the ship, for example, we pretty much got to see his viewpoint on things. Right. Uh, right. What was it like to kind of have him a little more defined that season? To well, it was satisfying. I mean, that was the feeling of it is satisfying. I think in the first season, it was uh, kind of getting together and coordinating the voice. In, in his point of view and I was uh, heavily influenced by the churn the novella the churn and I, I had that material to draw upon to really understand his past and bring that in and so second season we really got the chance to develop that and uh, and so that was, that was that was really satisfying to be able to do that how are you good to see you here <laughs> We had, we had no control in season one. Season one, we were basically the we were like on the wave of, of destiny. In season two, we got to make choices, uh, which is how you got to find out more about us because we got we decided to do a lot of things we did. Whereas in season one, it was just done to us and we had to survive. Season three, I guess, is the real test of the first real test of our relationship in this new family that we've kind of formed yeah. with the betrayal that we've experienced in the, in the, in the last season. Um, and and really kind of coming to grips with that and what's that mean. Yeah, tests our metal. We get to decide whether or not to just, you know, just toss everything away or see if this is worth fighting for and, and get to put, like, our, our, our money where our mouth is. And, you know, we, we've been spouting a lot of opinions in, in season two. Holden and Naomi, especially, I mean, Amos too, Alex too, we all have our opinions, we all have our uh, our righteous sides, and we believe in what we have. Ours is just simpler. <laughs> yeah. Ours is like, let's just eat. Um, but, but now season three, you know, the crap hits the fan, and, and we, we have a fracture within our own little family, and now we get to basically put our money where our mouth is and see you know is this worth fighting for is is the big picture worth fighting for and is the is the family unit worth fighting for Wes in season season two you had um, or over the course of the first two seasons you are a very clear cut character you, you point him in a direction he goes now that he's faced this thing with Naomi that sort of breaks that how, how does he you mentioned that he's not going to react well but is that going to change how he approaches things at all like absolutely Absolutely. I mean, Naomi was his ankle. And he kind of learned to grab a hold of her to understand the world. And so now that who he thought she was is completely shattered, he's anchorless again. And so you're really going to get to see who Amos is without the influence of Naomi. And who he was before. Look out. <laughs> Other ships. Um, I can't say that, but I, I will say, hell yeah, he's he is he loves what he does, and he is determined to be the best that he can be because of what happened in season two. Um, you know, Alex, Alex found himself. Alex. Uh, discovered his identity when he when he sat down in that seat uh, inside the the Rossi, and um, he discovered something that had been long dormant inside him, something that had been told to him that he could never be, and then all of a sudden he was proving everybody wrong, including himself. And once he discovers something like that, it's incredibly hard to let that go. He's going to fight tooth and nail, and he did. And when he failed to save those people in the breaching pod, 
um, it, it ate him up, it tore him up, and he, he worked and worked and worked to try and make sure that would never happen again. And so, um, yeah, he really, he really, I mean, I won't say he's looking forward to it, but he is really um, preparing himself to, to never allow himself or his family to be ever put in a position where they are in jeopardy uh, when there's anything he can do uh, to, to keep people safe. I read a book a season. One book a season. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. I do too. Yeah. So, you can, are you doing that because you did you get your Did you do your interview today? With your, okay, good. Yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Good, yeah. um, so, no, since you're not reading ahead, you don't have that anticipation of, oh, there's a scene for Amos in the book that would be amazing. There's a scene for Alex that, like, oh, I can't wait to do this. Because then you don't have maybe a disappointment if it never gets to the series. But I'm actually to to I'm actually starting to rethink the reading a book a season because I usually read it and uh, and I stop I've actually stopped reading um, the third book this season because it started getting in, it started playing with my expectations it started thinking about the future and thinking about the developments and the show doesn't always develop exactly the way the books do and so I decided maybe this season to experience it firsthand when I get the scripts for the next season and see if, if I'm more present in the moment and in experiencing what happens and then maybe read the book after, as an afterthought after the season. Yeah. I, I totally understand what he's saying because yeah, absolutely. When you, when you have information then your expectations, better or worse, you have expectations and then when they're not the same, you have to make an adjustment. But I, I, I'm not at that point yet though. I'm, I love information. I love having as much data as possible so that I can have as many little things to, to pull from when I'm making my final decisions of what to do on uh, on um, on the shooting day uh, or in the rehearsals. So I, I enjoy reading it, but I like to read it maybe as a compromise. I read it like two months before we start shooting, so it has the filter of time. So then the only things that stick out are kind of like the moments that really were poignant for me, and then I'm looking forward to exploring those moments. I'm not looking for like nitty gritty little details. You know? That's a good idea. I think I want to put this season on hold and read the book <laughs> way two months, and then we'll start shooting again. Yeah. You should have told me this ahead of time. Sorry, buddy. When we left off, all right. Well, well, everyone, off. everyone have a chance? You guys are looking for Prax's daughter. How does that affect Amos? Because he was orphaned at some point. I think that going to look for Prax's daughter is something that Amos feels like he can get behind. It's something that is worth risking his life for. Whereas all the other things, going after the photo molecule, you know, dealing with getting involved in the inner the, the battle between Mars Earth and it doesn't make sense to me. So why are we yes, yeah, this is something tangible that makes sense and uh, and and Amos has a connection to kids in that way because you know when he was a kid he had some terrible stuff happen to him and so him connecting to kids and protecting them is uh, is one of the things that really motivates him. And Alex, for very for different reasons, has a similar. You don't, care about, you don't like kids. He does like kids, <laughs> but not for that reason. <laughs> now, Alex, had because of his own his own history, he oh, yeah. he also can get behind uh, Prax's need to get his kid because he's going through this separation from his family and dealing with his his backstory and his demons yes. that that involve a family. So uh, similar similar reactions for completely different reasons. Okay, one of the quick things that, uh, for those of us who read the novel, and my friends who read the novel, were, uh, your Alex is like so much more multi-dimensional than the person we read. We always have yeah. ideas. But your your Alex is like five twenty dimensions or something. Well, I mean, so I, I think you brought all the all the writers. No, it's a, it's a good point. I, I mean, most of the writers have said that Alex is the least written. He's the most underwritten character in the books. Um, you know, Amos has his novella, and Holden and Naomi they have. Uh, uh, but I got a comic book. You know, which but he is wants great. a novella. But I want a novella. He wants so a novella. Let's get that novella going but um, but I will give credit to uh, our writing team on this show they have uh, they have acknowledged you know he's coming out of the novels very underwritten and so they've taken it up, uh, upon themselves to bring Alex's backstory and his story up so I can't claim credit for everything that, that goes on screen because these uh, the writer Narain and, and Ty and Daniel and Mark and Hawk and all the rest of the writing team they really really 
are are elevating the Alex's uh, game. But your ability, though, too, the blue things they've talked about is like you know, for some of the characters that Aaron writes, you know, they wrote more because of the character in Diogo. And so for you, it seems to me like you, you've elevated it, too. So, I mean, that's part of your... your well, thank you. That, well, that's very... I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, I really do identify with the characters, so it, it, I, I, I take it very personally. I take it to heart, so I appreciate that. Yeah, he's looking at 20 years. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much.